Hello, Cheryl Hunter here. Today, I am going to share with you some of my drawing techniques. I have a nice kit of Prismacolor colored pencils. Um, that's a long story I'll share with you at some point in another video as to how I received those. And uh, today's just a quiet day. Everybody's gone, so I'm just going to sit and sketch. I have a strange way of starting sketches. It's a little unorthodox. Um, I like to start with just drawing like a spot where the eyes will be. And when I sketch like this, it's very free flowing. I don't know what character I'm going to make ahead of time. I kind of just go from putting in a, a shadowy hole where the eyes would go. Um, and then from there, just kind of work out the face. And sometimes the proportions are terrible. Other times they just magically appear um, as if I really planned for it. So it's a fun way to, to just draw spontaneously and not have any kind of set style or parameter. It's, it's I guess, just, like I said, a free-flowing thing. Um, it's almost like they just magically emerge from the paper. And it's just something I just really, I really enjoy it. Um, and I have a, a plan to do some on black paper with white color pencil or um, possibly charcoal uh, in the same manner. And I'll put that video up when I do that. But for today, I'm just sharing kind of what I did for probably an entire day, uh, filling pages of my sketchbook with uh, just different figures, some faces, some animals, um, practicing hands, practicing bodies. Uh, but here you see I'm just, I'm putting in shadows really. So I start with the shadows and then I just kind of allow the shape to come out. And as the shape is forming, um, then I start to kind of get an idea of this particular character's personality. And so you'll see as I add more layers, and in this case, I'm going to use a few different colors. Sometimes I just use one color and I just um, apply lightly or hev heavily, depending on if it's dark, neutral, or light. So it's, it's just a monotone picture. Um, other times I do just add in other colors to give it some interest. So what I, what I do notice when I draw this way is, I don't know, it's almost like the emotion of the character comes out so, so strongly. And I, I guess it must be the way that I shade the eyes and the cheeks and obviously the mouth um, that gives them some kind of an emotional uh, facial expression. And I don't always know what that facial expression is going to be, like I said, until I, I get deep into it. And then I do jump right in. And, and do the pupils and the eyes because it, it just helps me, it sounds really strange, but it helps me to sort of identify with the character by having the eyes done and I, I can kind of go off the eyes, how that expression turns out. Um, it also helps me to establish the definite shape of those parts doesn't always work out. Sometimes I do it and they're way off or, um, you know, it just, it looks weird or whatever. And of course, once you, once you draw with that heavy of a, of a impression or pressure, it's hard to uh, change it. And I realize that that's why light to dark with color pencils is the way to go. But, um, 
but I always just take the chance. It's just a sketchbook. This isn't something I'm drawing for any other purpose but my own amusement. And um, it helps me to, to expand my ability to really understand the face, the structure of the face, how to establish emotion in the face. Um, so this this is just a really easy way for me to to practice giving this sketch a personality. Now, if I were to start with traditional method of drawing a face, and this is with no res no sources, I'm not looking at any image. I'm just drawing this straight from my head. If I were to use the method, and I'll probably put a video up um, at some point in this sketchbook playlist that shows me actually using different um, traditional methods of drawing a face, you know, putting in the lines and, and the, um, the, the specific proportional guidelines and all that. Uh, it, it seems like I can't get the same emotion and I don't know why that is. Um, when I do it this way, I always have some kind of a, a definite emotion that, that arises. So I'll keep working on the traditional way, but this method really helps me to be able to just draw loosely and not stress myself out on it. I don't need, there's no eraser. It's just whatever happens, happens. I just really like drawing that way. So at this point, I, I kind of see that, well, I think this guy needs a scruffy beard. So I start sort of laying out the shadow for his scruffy beard. And in a way, in this, he, he looks a lot like my, uh, I, I think he looks a lot like my Irish grandpa in a way. So as I, as I continue to put in some of the detail, and then I'll eventually start adding some other colors, but as I put in the detail, it looks more and more like my Irish grandpa. <laughs> he, he's been gone since the 1970s, late 1970s, but, um, my memory of him is, is still very strong. So I wanted to give him some kind of a soft feature uh, um, without it being, without it drifting to any kind of sadness. I, I just wanted it to be soft and maybe inquisitive. So I was trying to put lines in his face that suggested an, an inquisitive, surprised, or, or um, curious look versus anything sad or, or unhappy because it's, it's, that's a delicate balance, you know. Softening the face sometimes makes it look sad. So I'm trying to learn how to navigate those little nuances in order to make sure that I'm portraying the right emotion for this character. And so as I draw, I'm seeing his, his emotions start to come out. And I just, these aren't colors I would normally probably choose if I were to do a painting portrait. I mean, obviously, when, when you start putting a lot of blue or green around the eyes or even the red itself, you're making the character look um, kind of sickly. <laughs> you know, green or blue around the eyes is going to create the feeling of it, the person being sickly. Um, so this was just me being random trying to use it to add a little more of a, uh, a shading effect. Um, but it probably made him look a little sickly. I, I wouldn't suggest using blue or green too much around the eyes. Um, 
because you can see how that just all of a sudden drastically kind of changed his look. Uh, but it's all right. This is just for practice. And that's how you learn is when you practice and you go, oops, won't do that again. And my, my, my Irish grandfather, his name was Guy McManus. And um, my grandmother was Evelyn McManus. They're both gone. My grandma Evelyn lived to be 90. Um, and she was like a second mom, wonderful, wonderful person and taught me so much um, how I, how I relate to life, uh, my whatever sense of empathy, compassion it, it comes a lot from my grandmother, my mom too, but my grandmother definitely, uh, she cared for everyone. It didn't matter. You always had a clean slate with her, no matter what. She just, she would make you hold the line, you, you, you tow the line, you know, it was like, don't do that again. <laughs> but you always had a clean slate. She wasn't the type to ever hold grudges or, or be mad at you. It was, it was more just, oh, you made a mistake there. And it, it really kind of gave me a good start in life to have her around so much. Um, when my mom was going to school and working, my grandma would be there after school to just make sure we were doing what we were supposed to do. But um, yeah, my great grandpa, he was a mechanic and um, they came from Michigan and moved to California in the forties, I believe. But um, their ancestors, uh, my grandpa's ancestors were from Ireland and, uh, and Scotland. And I think some from maybe England. And then my grandma, primarily Scottish, Irish, Welsh, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. And then when she married my grandpa, of course, my, her, her name, when she married my grandpa, her father's name was uh, Arthur Buchanan. And I'm going to sketch him in a few weeks. i got a plan to sketch him. But I didn't plan on this being my grandpa. I just noticed the resemblance as it started coming out. Made me think of him anyway. So. He loved animals and was so quiet. He was a quiet person. I remember him just being very contemplative, quiet, just watching things, looking at things, not not really saying much. Of course, I was a very young child in in the time that I spent with him, um, and I was a a, a busy um, a busy young adult teen late teen young adult when he passed and um probably took for granted all that time that i would have had with him if i'd have made the effort um i remember one time we we camped he and my grandmother were camping in a place called oregon oregon pipes <laughs> oregon pipes i think it's called anyway it's a desert spot out here in California. Um, they were camping there and we went out to hang with them and camp for a bit. And he took me for a walk to look for rocks and ended up finding this beautiful obsidian arrowhead in the sand. Um, who knows how ancient that was. And, uh, through the years, he, he put it in a, an empty pill bottle that had his name on it, and he gave it to me. Um, and through the years, unfortunately, it, it ended up lost. A lot of things that I took for granted that I wish I had today. But um, 
I'll never forget that. It, it, I was probably nine or ten, maybe. I don't know how old I was, but I was young. So then I, I started this sketch, this one. I don't know what this is about. I started working on this one, and um, somehow he ended up looking like, I don't know, some kind of a, a real scary uh, strongman type. Maybe maybe a circus strongman from the old the old days of traveling circus where you had the the strong man that would lift all the heavy weights or whatever. That's what this guy makes me think of. Or maybe the maybe the um oh what are those guys called? Can't think of them. Anyway, he looks like quite a character. Circus Strongman, I think, is what I is what I would call this guy. And again, I, I just got that red pencil I had in my hand to define the dark spots there. Kind of a little overboard on his neck, but it looks like he's wearing a turtleneck like the other sketch. He's wearing a turtleneck sweater, so. I add more color later to try and fix that, but of course, like I said, once you've laid your dark color down, it's a little hard to lighten it up when you're using color pencils. So you can see how it just just doing the sh the shadows, it just brings out this face and this this expression. I do try, uh, not in this video, but you'll see it in another video of my sketchbook. Um, I do try to do some happier faces. <laughs> the happiness expression I'm finding a little trickier to do, but I'm gonna work on that because I, I would like to be able to control this process just a bit so that I can at least control the emotion. Might not control exactly how the face turns out um, as far as its structure, but I would like to be able to control the emotion that it's expressing. So my circus strongman. And so I would, I would like you to comment below. Tell me what you think of this process and um, I hope that it's it's given you some ideas that you can use. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start showing more of my sketchbook and the process of creating these characters, um, especially because I'm going to do a video about one of the books I'm writing or a couple of the books I'm writing and show you my the idea of what the characters look like in my head that are in the book that I, I'm putting together. So more of this to come. Appreciate your time and please, please comment. Please subscribe, share, like. That helps me out and uh, I can share more. So thank you so much and we will see you on the next one.